All right, let's see how these two little fellows here relate. So we are going to determine here in example five, which solid has a greater volume? All right, so here is the region we're looking for. R is the region in the first quadrant bounded by x is equal to y cubed and x is equal to 4y, which is greater. The volume around the x or the y axis. Now, let's be smart about this for about two seconds. What did we just say, right? Whichever variable is the axis that you're working with. Now check out these two equations, you guys. X is equal to Y cubed and X is equal to 4Y. What is the variable in these equations? You bet it's a Y. And if it's a Y and we have to come up with both of these, which one is the easier one and the smarter one to go with if my variable and my equations are already in terms of Y? Ah, nailed it. I'm going about that Y axis. That's the first one we're gonna look at. We gotta do both of them anyway. Let's look at that y-axis first and see how this plays out. All right. So, let's, again, these are super easy. So let's go with it. I know that this is in the first quadrant. And frankly, you guys should be able to do these, right? So I know that I have x is equal to y cubed that we're looking at. So if I have 1 to 1, I have that point, x is equal to y cubed. And then if I'm putting this out there, right, x is equal to y cubed. So if I make y a 2, what is 2 cubed? 8, exactly. 5, 6, 7, 8. So here's 8, so I have the point 2, 8. So... Here is my graph. Nope. Try again. Ugh, for crying out loud. Let me get my hand down here farther. Right? And then that's going to gradually keep moving in that direction. Now, if I have y, x is equal to 4y, that's just a line, right? So, but my slope here is I'm coming over that I'm looking at in terms of the y-axis. So I'm at the point zero, zero. We know that for a fact. When y is equal to one, x is four. When y is equal, pardon me, when y is equal to two, x is eight. Check that out. So on top here, I have y cubed is equal to x, or x is equal to y cubed. On the bottom here, I have x is equal to 4y. And then my region is what's in the middle. If I should have my highlighter smaller, it wouldn't be quite so bad. All right, and the first thing that we're looking at is we're going around this y-axis. because I'm already in terms of y. So that means my volume over here, whenever I'm looking at this, oops, let me go black, I meant to go black. My volume is gonna go from C to D, and I have two of these, so pi is F of y squared minus G of y squared dy, because everything's in terms of y. Y, 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 right? Okay, so this, if I'm looking at my values in terms of y, 
what are my C and my D? Yes, because it hits down here at zero and it hits up here at two. So my C to my D is going to go from zero to two. Do you see that? Because we're looking at our graph and coming up with that info. My problem didn't tell me that. But when we graphed those, my graph goes from zero to two. All terms are in Y. If I'm about the Y axis, when we're talking about the disk and washer method, then we're going in terms of Y. Spoiler alert, when we talk about the shell method, we'll have a different conversation. But right now, with the disk and washer method, if it's in terms of Y, everything is in Y, about that Y axis. Okay, you know I'm going to chuck that pie in front because I don't want to mess with it. I'm going to go from 0 to 2. Now, farthest away from my Y axis. Farthest away from my Y axis is this function, 4Y. Farthest away from my y axis, everything's in terms of y. So I now have 4y squared. Closest here, my innermost function is going to be this y cubed. Right? Okay, now work your magic. Setting it up is the key. Once you have it set up, then it's just integrating, and that's super easy. We all know how to do that, right? But getting that set up, noticing which axis, which variable, that's the key here. Okay. So now we just integrate. I'm going to take pi. I'm going to go from 0 to 2, and I've got 16y squared. Power to a power, you multiply. So you've got y to the 6th. dy, if you don't put that differential on, I'm taking points off. You all know this by now. I have pi, and then if I integrate, I add 1, I have 16 thirds. If I add 1, I have 1 seventh, and I'm taking that from 0 to 2. Now we all know 0 is our best day ever, right? You plug a 0 in there, and we don't have it. I'm going to keep scooting this over. I've got pi here, however, I do have a 2. So I've got 16 thirds, 2 cubed, minus 1 seventh. 2 to the 7th minus, and I'm just going to put 0 minus 0 because we know that's going to be the case. Okay, let's see what we've got, people. Oh, this isn't so bad. Oh, we're using our noggins here, y'all. We're using our noggins. Look at what's going on here. Let's be smart. So, I've got pi, and I know that 16 here, right? Let's, let's, take this concept. 16 here, I already know to be 2 to the 4th. So what do you actually have here? You've got, do you see that? 2 to the 7th over 3 minus 2 to the 7th over 7. Cool, right? Now I just have to multiply that by 7. So here I have pi is equal to, or pi times, sorry, 7 times 2 to the 7th over 21 minus 3 times 2 to the 7th over 7. Like terms. If you have like terms, I now have 7 2 to the 7th minus 3 2 to the 7th. And how many 2 to the 7th are you going to have? Oopsie daisy. You were probably hollering at me. And if you were, I'm super proud of you. Where did it, why is it 7? Why is it not 21? <laughs> it should be 21. You're awesome. I made a mistake. You're awesome. Keep it up. So now I have 4 times, what is 2 to the 7th? 2 to the 7th is going to be... If I look up here, I know it's going to be 16 times 8. What's that 16 times 8? 128. All right. And then 4 times 128. So my volume here is going to be 
4 times 8 is 2. Carry the 3. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11. 512, is that what you got? That's what you should get. 512 pi over 21. All right, so instead of, so be smart about this, you guys. It's always good to have number sense. So be smart about this. If you recognize this pattern, and you recognize this pattern, even if you had multiplied these out and you saw it was 128, then you would have had 128, 128. Oh, okay, no problem. I'll have seven 128s minus three 128s, and that'll give me four 128s. It's just like terms. Cool, right? All right, now... That is about the y-axis. Let's do this thing again about the x-axis. And I am going to make our lives easier by copying that and pasting it right over here. Because the graph is the same, right? We're just going to take this same graph and we're going to... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to scoot it. We're going to take this exact same graph, I'm just going to leave it here, and revolve it around the x-axis is where we're going with this now. Right? Now, here's the deal. When I revolve this around the x-axis, so I'm going to take this off. When I revolve this around the x-axis, I want everything to be in terms of X. So you're solving for the X here because I'm going around that X axis that we have. Let me, when you do it, it's typically done like this, I'm going backwards to forwards around that X axis. Okay, it goes in that uh, clockwise formation. So here, my if I solve for y, y is now equal to a 1 fourth x, right? Just, just divide both sides by 4. Over here, in order to get a y by itself, I'm going to take the cube root. So y is equal to the cube root of x. Same graphs. Exact same graph. I'm not changing my graph at all. I'm just representing this because I'm going around the x-axis to be in terms of x. Okay, let's do it. My formula is the same. I want that. The difference here is the farthest away now is going to be this cube root of x. The closest is going to be 1 fourth x because I'm saying what's closest and farthest to my x-axis. So I'm going to chuck that pi in front. And also look what happens. I'm going from A to B. So I'm going from 0 to 8. If it's in terms of X, everything's in terms of X. That's why I pushed you so hard with that U sub. If you have this in terms of X, you make that conversion. You need to be thinking, whatever my differential is, that is what my variables are. Okay, so I have the farthest away is x to the one-third, and I'm going to square that, minus the closest to that axis is this one-fourth x, and that gets squared also because it's a dx, right? Okay, do your thing. Scoot this up a little bit. My volume is now pi from 0 to 8. I have x to the two-thirds minus 1 16th x squared integrate if I add 1 to this that's going to be x to the 5 thirds and I'm going to bring that 3 fifths in front minus I have x cubed and I bring the 1 third in front that's going to be that 1 over 48, and I'm evaluating that from 0 to 8. Okay. Okay. So, scoot this up a little bit. My volume here is pi 
And fundamental theorem of calculus tells me I have 3 fifths times 8 to the 5 thirds minus 1 over 48 times 8 cubed. And I'm just going to put minus 0 because we know 0 minus 0, right? When I plug a 0 into both of these, then that's going to be a minus 0. Okay, check me out. I'm going to take the cube root of 8. That's 2, y'all, right? So 2 to the 5th, we know to be 32 minus, oh, we can break this down. We can break this down. Here, if I have, how do we want to break this down? I'm going to keep one of those 8s out because one of those 8s can go in there. So I'm going to look at this as 64 times 8 over 48. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I know that 8 um, goes into 48 six times. Wait. Divided by 8 is 6, and that's a 1. Yeah, the whole thing goes in. Oof. Now, 6 can be divided by 2, leaving me with a 3, and 64 can be divided by 2, giving me a 32. So I really have 32 thirds over there, right? That's what we're looking at. All right. You can handle this. No grumbling. You don't need a calculator. You got this. 96 fifths minus 32 thirds. Okay. Now we can do the same thing we did before because look how sweet that is. Here, my volume is equal to pi. Man, this is working out so nice for us. Look at that 32 goes right in there. 3 times 32. What? And I've got 32s again. So we can get a common denominator, no problem. So I've got pi, and I've got 3 here times 32. So if I multiply this by 3 times a 3 over 3 times this by a 5 over 5, Right, common denominator style. And I've got 932s minus 532s. Look at that. Look at that. So I'm left with 432s over 15. And then we just work that out. What is 4 times 32? 128, right? 128 fifteenths. So my volume here is 128 oops, pi over 15. Cool. Cool. And that's about the x-axis. Now, the question was, which one's greater? What was this one? 512 pies over 21. This is the y axis. Okay, now I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. We can find a common denominator, we can work this all out but I'm gonna cheat just a little bit, and I'm gonna let you know that this is 8.64 pies. This one is approximately 24.38 pies. So which one's bigger? the y-axis, right? So for this one, when it asks the question, which one has the greater volume, then the y-axis has the greater volume.
because that's just a question that was asked, right? That is not true always. So I want you to caution that. That does not mean every single time the Y, if we revolve around the Y axis, it's always going to have the greater. It is always, always, always dependent upon what your functions are. Whatever your functions are, that's going to dictate which one has the greater volume. All right. Okay. Now I do want to show you this because I think this is helpful. This, oops, I should have written this on here. This is the Y axis and this is the X axis. All right. So look at what these pictures are. If I am having this one, this looks more, if I'm looking at this, it's kind of, look how my bowl is kind of dished into the inside. Where here, it's kind of this straight that I have inside my bowl. Do you see that? And so then what's actually happening is this area that I have. It's coming down here to this point, and then that is the bowl, I'm air quoting that you can't see, that I'm looking at. Here, my bowl comes around, but I'm kind of going into my bowl as I'm, I'm working this around. Do you see that? Kind of working in. So my volume is going to be all of this as it gets wrapped around that Y axis. So you can kind of see a little bit how that would look. We're here, see how this is flat, and then I'm revolving this around. We're here, I'm kind of going into my bowl, so it's, it's somewhat filled in as I take this bowl around. And you can use your imagination to see that. All right? Moral of this story, pay attention to the variable, right? Pay attention to that variable. Are you going around the x-axis or the y-axis? and then put that variable in terms of whichever axis. All right, guys, go rock the socks off of this homework. You can